Welcome back guys. UC Organics, St. Louis, Missouri, Urban Country Gardening. Want to give you guys a quick update. Today is June the 17th. It's about 7.30, almost 8 o'clock in the afternoon. It's cool. Sun's going down. Um, done a lot of preventive maintenance in the garden today. Uh, want to give you a quick update on the grapevine. This is the new bed that was put in last year. As you can see, I've got cordons running down the wire. So those cordons will produce lots and lots of grapes next year. Looking forward to that. Um, as you can see, I also have my netting because we've got grapes on the older grapevines. Uh, let me show you what they look like. As you can see through the netting we've got lots and lots of grape bunches uh, looking very healthy nice and green uh, plump for their size as you can see at the bottom as well so and that's all the way down guys let me step back and show you what that looks like even though we had the two frost dates in May uh, we were still able to survive with quite a few grape bunches. As you can see, we've got quite a few. Now, I haven't sprayed uh, the grapevines um, because we just left bloom stage. But now that we are pea size, almost marble size, it's definitely time to get back on the spray pattern. Now, we have not had any rain in quite some time so I'm not too worried because powdery mildew only occurs when there's moisture uh, when it rains quite a bit so as you can see we've got grape clusters all the way down looking very nice so we've got our cordons to uh, create the extension for next year as well now still have not put together bed number five guys with everything that's going on coronavirus uh, we've got um, uh, people out of work um, things going on between work 40 50 hours a week haven't had the time as you can see, I've put water in. Uh, stepping back to bed number four. Those are carrots. That's 120 feet of carrots. And there's the beets. As you can see, the carrots have taken over. Looking forward to harvesting lots and lots of carrots. Um, it's going to be a large harvest, so I'll definitely... Uh, video that for you so that you can see what we're pulling out and uh, how we process those uh, as you can see the peas are just about done uh, it's midsummer and these peas do not produce in the heat uh, they just don't do very well um, I, I've picked quite a few off um, and as you can see the last harvest will probably come in a couple of days and those things will be taken out of the ground now because peas and beans uh, introduce nitrogen into the ground I'll cut right at the root I will not pull them out of the ground but I'll cut the stalk out of the ground and leave the roots so that uh, nitrogen can be added uh, into the soil now as you can see our potatoes are wiltering away uh, we've got lots and lots of potatoes underneath the ground is definitely cracking bulking so we know that we have large potatoes uh, we've got a little bit more to go we're gonna let these weather off just a little more and uh, we're gonna pull these up and uh, we're gonna plant beans purple pots and uh, blue lake bush beans uh, so that um, we can get lots of harvest for the winter that is bed number three bed Number two, uh, as you can see, uh, our greens are exploding uh, with growth. It is time for them to come out as well. Uh, we're going to harvest those. We're going to eat those. 
Uh, those are the turnip greens. And as you can see, our onions right next to that. They're still developing. Uh, they're just getting large to where they're going to make the bulbs at the bottom. So we're not going to mess with those yet. And the Georgia collards, we're going to pull those as well. Now we've got some volunteer tomato plants from last year. Um, I'm going to let those run and see what happens. Um, I think they're cherry tomatoes. Um, if they are, I'm only going to allow about two plants. Uh, we grew so many tomatoes last year. Uh, I just did not want to plant any this year. So um, that is bed number two. On bed number one, guys, look at that corn. Four feet tall. June 17th. We've got four feet tall corn. Now, as you can see right here, the beginning of a tassel. So now what I've been doing um, is introducing lots and lots of water at this particular point because we're running in the 90s every day. And my drip irrigation um, will suffice, but um, just to be on the safe side, I've been watering uh, manually uh, with my water hose, uh, heavily drenching the corn um, every day uh, doing this process right here so that we can um, make sure that we get good growth. Um, and as you can see, that corn is beautifully magnificent, phenomenal growth. Um, strawberries, we have not gotten any more strawberries yet. Um, We've got six quarts of strawberries um, out of this patch, and these are everberries, so we're expecting more to grow. Still looking nice. It is time to get in and weed it, pull out the dead plants so that we can make room for um, the new growth. Now, as you can see, this is our honeydew going up the trellis very nicely. Now, what I've been experimenting with this honeydew plant is um, making sure that when we get a fruit uh, pollinated and developing, uh, to snip it. Now, what I'm finding is that when I do that, the plant apparently doesn't like it and produces more fruit. Now, let's see if we can find some honeydews. There's a honeydew. There's a honeydew. There's another honeydew. We've got honeydew here, here. We've got honeydew here. We've got honeydew here. We've got honeydew developing here, as well as here, and honeydew there. So we've got quite a few. And as you can see, we've got large ones growing, uh, developing already. So, uh, beautifully growing um, inside that compost bin. Um, the only downside to this compost bin is I have to keep it watered every single day because the heat dries it out very well. But uh, awesome growth. Um, as you can see, going to the top of the trellis and producing lots and lots of flowers as well as lots and lots of fruit. Now, we've got watermelon. Here, we've got watermelon there. We've got watermelon there. Lots and lots of flowers. And we've got watermelon here. We've got watermelon here. So we've got watermelon all over we've got watermelon there there so we've got plenty of fruit developing um and again keeping it watered um letting the watermelon sprawl across the bottom while the honeydew and the cantaloupe crawl across the top as you can see we've got cantaloupe here we've got cantaloupe developing there there so i've done the same thing with the cantaloupe 
when the cantaloupe develops, I snip. And as you can see, we've got cantaloupe here. We've got cantaloupe here. And we've got cantaloupe there. And we've got cantaloupe there. So we've got lots and lots of fruit all over the place. Again, this is the second compost bin. So we're going to uh, continue to make sure that we keep it water moist. Again, more cantaloupe everywhere, even growing up the top. So um, all in all, the garden is doing very, very well. Phenomenal growth. Um, as you can see, our trellis, the beans are definitely headed. They're at the top. Bed number two, trellis, beans are halfway up. Bed number three, beans are halfway up. Bed number four, beans are halfway up. So again, um, we're looking forward to a lot, a lot of harvest uh, in about a month. So um, all in all, the garden is doing very, very well. Um, as you can see, lots of growth, um, lots of things being harvested. So we're looking forward to um, developing new plants, new growth. This is our apple tree. Um, we've got about 12 apples growing, doing beautifully well. We've got our blackberries, full of blackberries all the way up and down. We've got lots of new growth for next year as well. So we are definitely doing something good, doing something right. Um, and as you can see here, uh, I'm doing some maintenance, cleaning, uh, de-weeding. This is my new blackberry patch. And as you can see, I've done weeded half of it Check out the other half, guys. Weeds everywhere. That right there looked just like that two hours ago. So got in, uh, picked all the weeds out, uh, laid a thicker layer of mulch in to suppress those weeds. So uh, I'll tackle those again. Uh, probably tomorrow and finish this out so that um, we can have nice beautiful organization our plum tree and as you can see we've got about 10 plums they are reaching a nice size and they're starting to lighten up just a little bit so I'm assuming that uh, they're uh, getting ready to ripen up Looking very nice. Um, the tree is doing very well, uh, despite the uh, the bugs eating the leaves and whatever that fungus was that got the leaves earlier in the year. But uh, we still have nice, beautiful growth. Uh, the plums held on, so uh, we're looking forward to that. And I will definitely let you know how they taste. Now, as you can see, our butternut squash. It's growing up the trellis beautifully. Lots and lots of uh, growth. We're about four and a half, five feet up, and we've got about seven or eight more feet to go. So, as you can see, we've got butternut squash developing all the way up and down. Now, we've got 10 butternut vines here. Now, for my family, all I need is for each plant to produce four butternut squash. That'll give me 40 butternut squash for the winter. That's all. But 
I can tell you that these plants are definitely going to produce a lot more than that. And I can tell you now this one, as you can see here, see how large that is, was not even pollinated. So it's not going to survive. But imagine what will happen when I do get pollination because we got some here, we've got some here, we've got some here. So at every, every branch, You've got flowers and butternut squash. Now, down below is where all the male flowers. Now, this one is getting ready to open up tomorrow. As well as, there was one more that's getting ready to open. And here it is here on the back side. So, these two will open up tomorrow and will be waiting to be pollinated by male flowers. Now, our male flowers are at the very bottom. Hopefully... One of those will open and we can get some pollen and we can get our butternut squash started. If not, we've got plenty of time. We've got plenty of growth. We've got the beautifully hot sun, hot weather. So um, we're going to have lots and lots of butternut squash uh, to pull us through the winter. And I'll show you guys what, they're, uh, what they look like once they're developed. Our cucumbers... Now, as you can see, our cucumbers are trellising up the fence. They're about three feet up. And as you can see, I've been tying it as it grows. Now, it's tying itself. But I want to make sure that I keep it going straight and not bending. Now, what I did was I removed the bottom leaves. And I removed the suckers for the first three feet so that now as the suckers grow out, they all attach themselves to the fence and start producing lots of cucumbers. Now we do have a cucumber here and we've got one there and we've got one at the bottom that's waiting to be pollinated. So um, we'll keep our eyes on it and see how it goes. Um, if I have to make a one minute video to show you the development of the cucumbers, then that's what I'll do. But um, look forward to it. And everything seems to be moving very well. As you can see, lots and lots of flowers. Um, and as you can also saw, we've got cucumbers. And we're just waiting for growth. Um, so, all in all, 18 minute video guys. But lots and lots to cover. The beautiful growth, the corn, the greens, the potatoes, the carrots. Um, bed number five waiting to be put together. As you can see, I've got my soil. Um, we've got um, our grapes doing beautifully well. We should have lots and lots of grapes next year. So, wanted to give you guys an update on what's going on. I haven't posted a video in about a month, I believe. I've got quite a few on my phone, but I have not posted them. So this one will be, and uh, today is June 17th. Um, it's about 8, 8.30 um, in the afternoon. St. Louis, Missouri. UC Organics. Magnificent. Phenomenal growth. Coming to you with an update so you can see the progress from start till now. As I always say, guys, anybody can do this. All you have to do is get started. Until next time, happy gardening.